Hi, my name is Tina, and this is Knitting Blooms. You can find show notes for everything I talk about on my blog at www.knittingblooms.com. And if I miss a link, please feel free to contact me on Ravelry as Blooming Knitter. Or you can email me at knittingblooms at gmail.com. Come and join the Ravelry group so you can be eligible for all the prize drawings. And be sure to introduce yourself so that I can get to know you also. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter as Bloomy Knitter. And don't forget to click the like button on Facebook for Knitting Blooms. Hi, my name is Tina, and today I'm going to show you how to do a charity hat on a knitting machine. But before I get started on how to set up the machine and work the hat, I want to show you, um, tell you a little bit about the machine that I'm using today. The machine I'm using today is a Brother Convertible KX390. And I actually have three knitting machines. And this machine I like a lot because it is a convertible knitting machine. And what that means is that it will go from a standard knitting machine with needles close together at 4.5 millimeters or it will be, you could use it as a bulky machine using a different key plate. And then these would be, the needles would be at nine millimeters apart. And it's very easy to change out this machine. All you need to do is remove the standard key plate or standard um, front and replace it with the bulky front. And it is that easy and you just slide it into place. And the only thing is, is you just want to make sure when you, when you change out these key plates that you put the right numbers where they should go. So that when you pull your, um, your needles forward, you know which needles to pull forward. Also, I want to mention that if you are buying a used knitting machine, and even if the knitting machine, if you're buying a machine that says new, unless you are buying it directly from the manufacturer, you will need to change out the sponge bar uh, before you can use your machine. I um, have noticed a huge difference when I changed out the sponge bar on this machine. So I highly recommend, regardless of how old the machine is, if you are not buying it from the manufacturer direct, I highly recommend that you change out the sponge bar when you first get the machine. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this hat on the knitting machine. This is such a simple, quick hat that you will be making hundreds of these for charity knitting projects. I learned this hat from my friend on Ravelry after um, I got my first knitting machine and her name on Ravelry is Mom of Four and she has been doing this uh, charity hat for some time and I tried it out and I really enjoyed this pattern. So I want to show you how to make this pattern as well and like I said it is so quick and easy you can complete a hat with seaming in a in under 45 minutes. I am using the bulky um, part of the machine so I'm using every other stitch um, or every other needle here and with this hat this hat is going to be 70 stitches wide but I'm going to start the first row with half of those stitches so every other stitch so I will go and use this tool, which will help me to pull forward every other stitch. And I'll start at the 35 mark. And I'll pull forward every other stitch until I have 70 um, stitches marked off. And again, it's every other stitch right now, so there will not be 70 stitches pulled forward. There will only be 35 stitches pulled forward. And then I'm going to um, thread my carriage. And I'm not going to go through how to thread the machine and what have you. I'm just going to go focus mainly on how to do this hat, which is a very simple hat. And I'm going to knit one row with every other stitch. And at this point, I'm going to cat, uh, hang my cast on combs.
making sure that I have all the edges and that I don't have any extra um, yarn pulled past the cast on comb. So I have my cast on comb. Now I'm going to pull forward the other alternating stitches that I will be using. So now I will have 70 stitches pulled forward. And again, you'll see that there's some stitches remaining in the back of the bed. And that is because, again, this is a convertible machine, which means that I can use the bulky or the standard. The standard uses um, every needle and the bulky uses every other needle. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and knit 50 rows total. Now I started, that was my first row, and now I'm going to knit a total of 50 rows, so 49 more rows. And I always want to make sure that first row goes, um, goes well. And because I'm using a skein here, I might have to pull out a little bit of yarn just to uh, get me going here. And now I'm going to continue making sure that all my needles are catching. rows are always um, the ones that you want to pay the most attention to because if you happen to drop a stitch at the beginning it's going to screw your whole thing up. So I'm going to continue. Actually it looks like I'm my um, cast on comb has come loose a little bit here so let me just fix that problem. Okay and I'm going to keep going. One thing I want to be sure of as I'm knitting across these rows is that I always pass my last stitch to make sure that the carriage resets itself. And now I have my 50 rows. And I'm going to go ahead and remove my cast on combs because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip this up so that I have a hem. And the easiest way that I have found to do this is to follow the middle stitch, follow the middle stitch all the way down, making sure to grab that stitch and put it on the needle right at the center. and then work my way over each, each direction. Grabbing the stitch and putting it on the needle.
now I have all of my stitches cast on or pulled up so that there's a hem here and I'm going to reattach my cast on combs to add my, my weight back to my um, work and then I'm going to knit another 28 rows being sure that this first row I do very slowly to make sure that I don't drop any stitches And now I'm going to continue for another 27 rows. Okay. Now I think I'm going to do a couple more rows. I, I've done 30 rows now, but I'm not sure that I like... I think I'm going to do two more rows and then I will do the next step. Okay, so now I have done 30 rows after my first 50 and after I hung the hem. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer every other stitch over one needle. So that only the stitches, every other needle has a stitch again, just like we did in the cast on. And then I'm going to move those stitches out back to holding position. So I'm going to start at the end and I'm just going to take the stitch off and move it over one and then leave those two stitches right there. And then I'm going to take the next stitch and move it over one and so that every other stitch is being moved back to holding position again. And now I have every other stitch transferred over and I'm going to make sure that all of those extra stitches or extra needles are pushed back into holding position and that none of them are forward. All of the needles that do not have stitches on them are pushed to the holding position. And I'm going to knit two more rows. And now I'm ready to take my stitches off of my machine. I'm going to take my yarn and I'm going to um, cut my yarn approximately two um, carriage lengths of my stitches just to make sure that I have enough yarn. And then I'm going to thread my tapestry needle and I'm going to uh, run my, my yarn through my stitches so that I can take them off of the machine. stitches are off of the machine and all I have to do is pull this thread to pull those stitches to, at the top together and then I just have to mattress seam the seam and the hat will be complete and I'm not going to go through the um, the details of mattress stitching if you'd like to see that tutorial I do have a tutorial out there um, on my website uh, that will tell you how to do the mattress stitch and what I am going to do though is I'm going to get rid of some of this excess yarn so it makes it a little easier to do the mattress stitch but I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
finish up the mattress stitch and then I will have the completed hat. The first couple stitches I'm going to do and then I'm going to cinch the top closed making sure it's nice and tight and then I'm just going to continue to do the mattress stitch all the way down. Now I will just seam up the ed the uh, seam or not seam up the uh, but weave in the ends. And there you have it completed hat. So quick and easy, 